Today's show is brought to us and you and you and you by DraftKings Sportsbook, baby. Only the top rated sportsbook and app in all of North America. Safe, secure, reliable. We love all of that, baby. And I think you should as well. And that's the reason why we come bearing gifts. Promo code. Shout out to the promo code. It is Moats. Simple concept. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. You make that first deposit bet or you you put that first initial uh, deposit of $5 in and you will receive up to $200 in bonus bets when you use that promo code all right it's a dope concept man and they got a ton of cool offers that are currently going on that you might get a chance to reuse some of those winnings potentially to make some more money all right but with that being the case we also know that at times man you can get lost in the sauce it can be a lot up on you and uh you might develop a gambling problem well if you're living in new york it's a number that you can text but for everybody else the digits to dial law one eight hundred gambler. All righty, ladies and gents, boys and girls, children of all ages, man. We're excited about this one right here. Since he got drafted, we've been talking about him. And now it's that time, man. So we came into the league in that 2023 NFL draft when the Steelers selected him in the second round. 32nd overall pick out of Penn State and as a rookie finished as a finalist for the AP Defensive Rookie of the Year Award. Talk about none other than that still a starting cornerback Joey Porter Jr. Young Joey. Young JJ. How you doing over there, man? <laughs> man, I'm doing good, man. Appreciate you. Nah, without a doubt, man. Definitely appreciate you. Like I said, man, pulling up, man, getting on the show with this stuff like that, man. And uh yes, sir. We got to catch up, man. We got plenty we want to talk to you about, man. But um, obviously, the start of your second year now, talk about the you know how it's been for you, man, going from that first year where it was a little bit slower at the beginning in terms of playing time. But now you coming out this thing, starting, and not just starting. You following people, locking people up, true shutdown corner life, man. So what's this year been like for you in comparison? Man, uh, it's been great, you know, just – just being able to come out with a hot start, you know, the defense is playing great. We're off to a good start. Just to be with those group of guys every time, it just gives me more confidence to just do my job and just do it at a high level. So um, I'm just I'm just liking where everything's at right now, confidence-wise, knowing the plays-wise, and uh, just, just overall flying around. No, I like that. I like that. Now, with that being the case, though, we also know that you, you know, finally had your first NFL offseason, man, where you weren't on the circuit combine all-star games pro days etc right so how was your first nfl offseason man did you do any traveling or anything man it was great i, I definitely did traveling uh <laughs> i was <laughs> i definitely did travel you know i took some time off it was my first time in like a long time like you said the circuit and i had some money in my pocket so uh, hey. it, was, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was a good off season go. definitely a, a great off season Let's yeah. go, man. <laughs> what would you say was the fun, the most fun place you went, man? Oh, man, the most fun. That's a tough one, but I'll probably I'll probably say Miami, okay. just off of the fact uh, my my friend got drafted. It was a draft party. Nice. And he got drafted, so it was it was a it was a great event overall. Let's go. Shout out. Can you tell me the story of you picking your jersey number? I know you picked twenty four because of Ike. But is it true? Were you trying to get a single digit? Were you trying to get five? <laughs> I was. I was. I was. I was <laughs> what happened so there? I was. All right. So basically, I came in. I'm like, I'm trying to get a single digit. At first, I, I know I wasn't going to get nine because that's my college. That was my number in college. But mm-hmm. balls had nine, so I was like, I'm not getting that. So the the next option was five nine, or eight. Those were my two favorite numbers coming out. Um, but Coach T was like, uh, "Yeah, we don't we don't do single digits anymore. Like that's not that's not a thing. That's not a stiller thing." I was like, "All right, that's cool, I guess." So then they gave me the number options, and I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll definitely go with Rock the Twenty Four. It was just only right." So how are you feeling with Patrick <laughs> Queen getting sex? I was pissed. <laughs> I, I was I was mad. I texted Coach T immediately. I was like, "So what's going on?" And he was like. Give me an all pro season, then we could talk about Ooh, it. So, okay, that's, so, that's so, what we got so would you switch the okay. five potentially? You said what? I would switch you the switch five? the five? Yeah, are you sticking with twenty four? Honestly, I don't. 
I don't know. Uh, 24, 24 has been good for, good to me lately. So That's true. And it, and it's just a, it's a good tradition. You know, Uncle Ike had it. Facts, he was a lockdown facts. corner. And now, now I get to rock the number. So it just it just fits. 24 fits right now. No, I like that. <laughs> That's funny. My man say, yo, what's up with this coach? How he get to say he just got here, man? Wait a minute. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, what's going on? <sighs> Shout out to it though, man. So hey, get this all pro, and then we are gonna have some decisions to make. All right, shout out to you. Oh though. yeah, yeah, <laughs> for surely. Yeah, he, he put a fire in my back for sure. So uh, I'm ready. No, I like that, man. Now we know, man. You obviously, you know, played your high school ball here first at uh, North Catholic, and then transferring over to North Allegheny. But just talk a little bit about what it was like for you playing high school football in the Whip Hill. We always, you know, hear people talk about where it was like in Texas or in California, Virginia. But you actually did this day, man, here. So what was that like for you? Man, um, to be honest, I feel like it really set me up for my football career down the line. Um, I feel like Pittsburgh is a blue nose, blue collar uh, style of play, you know, smashing out football. Mm-hmm. And um, even at a, even at a young age in high school, that's that's what uh, Pittsburgh is all about. So the fact that I was able to get get that in my game at high school, then playing the Big Ten, where it's kind of the, where it's most likely same. the same thing, <laughs> yeah. and, and then fall into the to the north, where it's definitely the same thing. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, I feel like it all turned out pretty well, actually. I was, oh, I'm gonna say, man, because I just think of man just the rich tradition too. Of obviously, we talk about some of the NFL guys, Hall of Famers that have come before you guys. Now you think about you being in a part of this wave as well, and then it's a whole another group of young guys coming to try to be the next version of you. Like when I think of that, man, I'm like, yo, it's something unique about what y'all got going on here in Western PA, man. My question is, why Definitely. did you stay in Pittsburgh for college? Ooh, mm. ooh, <laughs> what happened? What? You said why didn't? Yeah, why didn't you stay in Pittsburgh? Why didn't you go to Pitt? <laughs> we could use you. Um, yeah, I feel like around that time, to be honest, I feel like around that time, we had so many good players in Pittsburgh that we didn't recruit. And I was like, if they're not recruiting in their, in their bank, I don't want to be the only guy here. So, Wait, they didn't um, recruit you? I was like, they, they recruited me. They definitely recruited me, but I felt like there was way more better players in the area that they weren't looking at. And it didn't make sense to me. So I was like, I'm just going to go down the street. That's a shame. And, uh, and Pitt dropped the ball, man. <laughs> That's a shame. Pitt dropped they, the ball. I hope yeah, we're doing dropped better the ball. now. They dropped the ball. At J- hey, hey, JMU would have loved you. You could have yeah, came to so James too. Madison. Hey, we would have. you would have been a king, all right? I'm just throwing it out there. You would have been king around there. I definitely think that, I definitely think Pitt's doing better now recruiting in the backyard way more than uh, my time. But, yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> I'm not happy about that. Yeah, we got that dude from Alabama now, the the, the five star quarterback. I, I don't know if you've seen him. He's been he's been doing some stuff this year. Not in film, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's really? in the Heisman watch. Yeah, I'm like okay. That. So uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, hopefully Pick can keep it up for now. But uh, can you tell us about like your draft story? What was going on there? Because we initially passed on you in the first round. You had to have been a yeah. little bit pissed about that but then we come back around and get you in the second could you just take us through those emotions first round and then you have that whole day of sitting there second round we have the first pick like everyone's talking about taking you it's like the most obvious we need a cornerback you're joey porter's son let's just make you the first pick in the second round but what's going on with you throughout this whole time um you know like so for a guy going through a process you got a lot of scouts and analysts and even coaches telling you like where you're projected. So throughout the whole process, I was projected a mid to late first round guy, like a for sure first round pick throughout the whole process. They got me at the draft. They I'm in my suit and everything like that. So, you know, you go to the draft and you get your sweet numbers where you think you're going to get picked. And once those, once those numbers start coming in, and air, you see just everybody in the table, everybody from different families looking around, just waiting for that call. And you're not getting that call. You start getting like a little antsy, like a little bit nervous. But, um, through that process, it was it was a uh, it was a it was a, a weird moment because I was just going through a lot of emotions just off of I have all my family here, like they all came down to see me, and I didn't get to walk the stage. I feel like that was the biggest disappointment mm-hmm. in that whole. Um, the whole process was just was I had a lot of family come out and they didn't get to see me do what I wanted to do. But I feel like it overall turned out 
in the right in the in the right spot because I was the thirty second pick. Contract wise, it's, it's a better it's a better fit for me. I get the D back home, and uh, it just really fell in my lap. But I think it's good. Cause, um, yeah, just the whole situation when I was like, yeah, the Steelers are definitely not getting me. I didn't have no trust in them at all. So it was a, it was a shock to me when I got the call. <laughs> it was it was definitely a shock to me. No, nah, shoot, man. We glad they made that call. We was all over here saying the same thing. Hey, man, what they waiting on, man? All right, no, nah, no. Nah, why they playing these games? All right, now nah, y'all better not play again. It's the thirty second over. Man. Hey, come on, man. You, what we waiting on? Send them a text. You know what time it is? Yeah. And then like after the draft, they're like, "You guys want to come back the next day?" I was like, "I'm going home." Like, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I already booked my, yeah, I already booked my flight. We out. <laughs> Ain't no coming back. Yeah, I was, I was on that flight immediately. <laughs> No, that's dope. Now, man. now you cut out there for a second. You didn't? Did you not trust the Steelers or think they were going to draft you because we passed on you in the first round? I just at that point of the of the draft, I didn't know what to expect. There was so okay. much chaos going through the first picks that like people was getting picked that you didn't think will get picked or just the, the draft is a madness in itself. Mm-hmm. You never really know till that day. So at that point, I was just already oh. Uh, tired of the whole situation i just want to go on the team <laughs> so I'm, I'm assuming going into it steelers were probably on the top of your list of likely picks right um yes and no like i didn't i already knew the relationship i had with coach tomlin and the steelers obviously just being there for so long but i you know you just never want to get your hopes up on one spot mm. so that's what i i've never tried to focus on one team like oh these guys text me more I had a great meeting with them. It's really just the ball's not really in your court, so I just don't try to overthink it. Nah, that's dope. That's a dope perspective to have, man. I wish I had that perspective when I went through it. I ain't gonna lie, I fell in love, man. I thought the Niners were gonna draft me in the first round, first overall pick. <laughs> they, man, I was like, oh yeah, I know I'm getting drafted by them. And obviously, we know that ain't happened, man. So I wish I had your perspective <laughs> back then. It would have made life way easier doing that process, man. But, and that I got that. I got that from my dad, you know, See, shout out. That story. he told me, he was like, yeah, he thought he was going to the Cowboys. They gave him a cell phone and everything oh. number, and they didn't pick him. And he was like, yeah, man, just never, never have, never have your heart sold on the team. So I was like, say no more. No, shout out. Shout out to Pops, man, for that right there. And, I mean, that's a yeah. perfect, man, perfect that you brought him up because I actually wanted to ask you, you know, we obviously know your name, Joey Porter Jr., we know who your dad is, man. Joey Porter Sr., man, an absolute legend within the Pittsburgh Steelers and NFL, man. What was that like, though, for you, man, in the sense of you saw this as a kid, man. We got a chance to see you in high school doing what you were doing while he was coaching. Then, obviously, you get to Penn State and everything like that. But then to come right back to where he became a legend. And now you're kind of living in this thing of, all right, it's his own shadow, but you kind of you still creating your own name. Like, what has all that been like for you, man? Man, it's a, it's been a full circle moment, you know, just just being a kid, falling in love with the sport while in Pittsburgh, seeing him go, like, seeing him win the Super Bowl, being on the field, and then being able to put on the same jersey and get drafted on the same team, it's, it's, a, it's really still hard to believe and think about it, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wild feeling. Like, I went to high school here, I have a house 10, 15 minutes from my parents. This is crazy, it's, uh, man. <laughs> I, I get to go to my cousin high school games and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of stuff uh, that I get to have that not not a lot of people get to have coming into as a rookie. So I was very fortunate to to land here. So, yeah, it's, you, it was, it's a cool moment. It's did cool. you ever envision it being like this, Ben, when you were growing up watching them or even when you were playing in high school? Like, did you ever think, it's, yeah. hey, but you know, this could actually happen, man. Like, I think this could be this, man. Yeah, for surely. I, I had my mind made up at a young age. Uh, this this was what I was going to do. I didn't know how it was going to work out, but I knew I would be somewhere in the NFL playing. Fine. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. He said, yo, I see what pops do for a living. I'm doing that. All right. I'm, I'm yeah. winning. Yeah. <laughs> and and I told him that, and we went to work ever since. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Is the reality uh, any different than some of the expectations you had? Um. Now this is I feel like everything what I thought it would be it is just just off the simple fact like I got to see it uh from my from my dad uh when he was playing you know just uh 
the, how the fans interact with you, how to prepare yourself for games, how to take care of your bodies. And just him being in my corner throughout the whole step, it was never really any surprise or any shock to to the NFL lifestyle. Now, how do you deal with the expectations or the hype with, you know, with the last name being drafted by the Steelers and us fans thinking you're, you're like our franchise quarterback. You're going to be the guy for the next 10 years locking up top receivers. How do you deal with those expectations and hype? Um, I really don't, I really don't think too much of them. You know, I, I really run, I, I run to the fight. That's the kind of mentality I have. I like those type challenges. Uh, I knew what the Steelers were doing when they picked me. They needed a, they wanted a lockdown guy, and uh, I feel like that's what I am, and that's what I try to bring to the table every time I step on the field. So um, I was always ready for those moments. Me and my dad always had a talk. We had a talk at a young age about having the same, having his last name, having his same first name, and uh, just dealing with the pressure. And we already talked if if I'm doing if I'm doing everything I can, and the fa- my family and everybody's happy with me at the end of the day, then there's there's really no point in listening to the outside noise. So uh, after that, having that talk with him, there was there was really no noise after that. No, nah, that's big facts. I like that. And not only are you a lockdown corner, but you also be hitting. I'm, I've seen you tackling over there this year, man. You getting out there, man. <laughs> hey, 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 we yeah. peeping it, all right? So keep we keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Definitely. You know, I'm trying to be, trying to, you know, uh, get my neck roll on. That's yeah, what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Bring your neck roll. So I'm trying to bring mine. <laughs> Let's yeah, go. put it on tape. Well, since <laughs> most brought up the tackling, there might have been a game or two early in last year where I was just like, ah, oh, man, JPJ, he, he could have done a little bit better on that tackle. Did Did your dad have a conversation with you after one? It might have been the Titans. I can't remember, but did did pops oh, yeah. have a conversation with you? Like, hey, man, we, we got to tackle a little bit better here going forward, and you Definitely, have improved. Uh, He's he's I'll say he's my biggest fan and my biggest critic at the shout same out time. To you know, uh, Let's go. <laughs> shout, yeah, he's he's always gonna he's always gonna keep it real with me no matter what. So uh if there's stuff like Coach T said that I need to get off my tape, he's the first person to let me know what I need to get off my tape and what I need to approve on. So yeah, definitely uh when I first started getting my run on the field, he was like, We gotta fix that tackling, we gotta get that off our tape because if you don't, teams are gonna keep go- coming at you mm-hmm. and uh he basically is like, if you shut it down early, they're, they're just going to stop alone. running your way. Yep. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do. Shut it down early. Go the other way. I love it, so, man. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep working on that. I love it, man. Like I said, it's showing up on the tape, baby. So keep doing what you're doing, man. But, um, Appreciate you. Heck yeah, man. So last year, though, man, you had an opportunity to play your first ever NFL playoff game, right? Talk about just yes, the sir. experience, man, of the postseason that whole week and then obviously – playing in the game what it was like and ultimately how do you build on that experience as well man it was a it was a lot of growing and learning experience just to being in one playoff game i'm always a, i love playing home but i love away games i love the atmosphere is mm. us versus their them and their crowd just i just like the odds against us and we got to fight so um just being our first playoff game versus the bills at their spot at their venue i was excited i was i was locked in i was ready um, we didn't get the outcome that we wanted, but I feel like I learned a lot from that game, and it just got got me hungry to just go back in the playoffs and rack up some wins and win the whole thing. No, facts on that, man. Like you said, it's nothing like playing in the playoffs, man. That pressure of a single elimination. We got to be on our A game, and going into the hostile environments on the road in the postseason, way different than the regular season as well, man. Way different, and just getting the dub out of those situations makes the W even a greater feeling so uh, yeah definitely got to get that feeling again no without a doubt man without a doubt now we know you're still very young in your career but you've already made a lot of plays man like i said we big fans over here but if you could man just talk about what would you say is your favorite play from your career thus far my favorite play that's a tough one that's a yeah that's a tough one um I'll say I'll say I'll say there's like a drive. I had a favorite drive or a favorite like possession. I I think it was it was the Bengals Thursday night or Friday Thursday night or Monday night game. Mm -hmm. And I had uh I had a third down I had a third downs tackle in the goal line to make them go for it on fourth down and Uh I had to stop 
versus T. Higgins. Oh, let's it was go. Like second, third down. Th- those two, those two uh, plays right there was my two favorite. Just off of the tackling I made to make them go yeah. for it on that on that down, mm-hmm. and for me to lock up on the next play versus a, a very high uh, wide receiver like that, it was it was a great moment for me. Let's for sure. go. Okay, okay, because yeah, you are showing the versatility with that the full package, not the OBJ pick. Yeah, uh, yeah, everybody, everybody. The OBJ was fine. The OBJ <laughs> pick. That's 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 always going to be speaks for itself. Uh, yeah, that that has so much weight on it. Just the rivalry. Yeah. With the whole Steelers Ravens, the the point of the interception versus who it was. Like, yeah, that, that, that for, and first else. Ravens matchup too. It was like, Ooh, all first right. Raven, I okay. Off the MVP. Sheesh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Said put off some respect and, on his name. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. That was a welcome. That was a welcome party for sure. Yeah. That was, that was nice. No, nah, without a doubt, like that, that right there. Was, was there truth in the trash talk that, uh, people were uh, saying that you, you said to Odell after? Yeah, I was no. Nah, so, so, oh, so you so, didn't say that. The go be a family man. I did not say that. Really? That never. Oh. That never came out my mouth. Oh. Go be a family man. Yo. That never. Like, I I had two. I wish I would have said it. Like, I was like, that yo, was that's spicy. Line. I was like, dang, you talking like that? That's a good Jeez, line, man. That was. <laughs> that's a good line. But I had a lot of respect for OBJ just because I was always a fan of his. So, but yeah, that, I I didn't say that, but. It was a good line. I wish I did at that moment. <laughs> nah. Okay. Glad we got the verification. Yeah, thanks. All right. So last one I got for you is this, man. We know every time we talk about, you know, making it to the NFL, we say it's a transitional period, right? We go from, all right, college, man. We felt like we was the big man out there. But we get to the NFL, and it's like that moment, it hits us. we like, woof. All right, these dudes, it's a little bit different over here, man, whether it's somebody you're going against or sometimes that first NFL check. But what would you say for you has been your welcome to the NFL moment? Uh, that's a uh, – I'll probably say I, – I don't know. That's a tough one. I Just going – I used to go against AB in high school. So, like, Facts. going against those dudes, it was never really like a – a shock to me are when they make plays because you know everybody athletes mm-hmm. they're gonna make some good plays here and there but i'll probably say the gp catch in camp was mm-hmm. like that was that was a tough catch you know there was there was yeah. nothing I could have on that play to to stop that outcome so i feel like that was that was just a and how everybody reacted to it yeah that was part of my welcome to the nfl moment <laughs> Respect. Sure. I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I I was a little upset too. I was like, "Hey, y'all ain't throwing no pet right like that on." No, nah, man, stop part. Like, Bray pushed off anyways. I ain't even like that catch, bro. You know, I ain't even like that, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I was hating on it hard. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I was mad, and then it's like I got my that same day, and I didn't get the same reaction. I didn't get the Instagram post. So like, man, this is terrible. I was I was, I was over it. I was about to post it myself, but no. Nah, he said, but, yo, I nah, got a was... pick, man. Look at the interception I got. Look at this play. Exactly. <laughs> Look at this play. But it's cool. It's the offensive league. I can't be mad. Now, is that hard for you, like, mentally, though, when you're dealing with that type of stuff, man, where, all right, you could be in perfect position, but a guy could just do something crazy like that, man, and it's like, yo, what do I do with this? Yeah, no, because – if I if I have to make him do a spectacular catch like that every time, there's he he can't do that every time. Right. That's at least in my mind. Yeah, like they can't make that catch every ten out of ten times. Time. So, um, like I just be like, okay, yeah, you got lucky with that one. You won't do that again. So okay. that's that's just the kind of mindset that I go with, and when those situations happen. Okay, I like that. Respect it. Respect. Well, hey, man, that's all we have for you. But once again, man, we appreciate the heck out of you taking some time and hop on the show with us, man. Wish you nothing but the best. Keep killing it out there, man. All right? All right, man. Thank you. Appreciate y'all for having me. No oh, yeah. doubt, baby. Peace, bro. Peace.